straight game for the Wildcats without their All-American center and Big 12 Player of the Year candidate, Ayoka Lee. Gisela Sanchez gets to start right off the opening tip. K-State finds Briley Glenn. And the Wildcats are off and running. And here is that BYU lineup that we mentioned before. And it does include Whiting and Wilson, the two freshmen who start in the guards position for this BYU team. Lob over the top for Gustin. And she strikes inside. Points in the paint is where BYU wants to attack this K-State team. Wildcats with a familiar look. The four starters around Sanchez have started all season long, including quick season unanimous first teamer for the All Big 12 honors and Gabby Gregory. Sanchez trying to turn around jumper, doesn't get it to go. And BYU trying to get the tempo up a little bit. We'll bring it back the other way. Well, you got to think too, you, if you're BYU, you do want to push a little bit and not let K State's defense get set up. Whiting coming off an ACL tear as a high school senior. Was going to go to Oregon, ended up coming to BYU with her mom. Inside, Gustin unable to hit, can't stay at the rebound. Serena Sundell, who has played at a first-team all-league level so far, gets to Gregory, drive of the miss, Sanchez, the offensive rebound. Bobcats was swinging around, Riley Glenn with a hard take. Mid-range for Sanchez. She's one Sanchez has struggled a little bit in Big 12 play. Really had great minutes in the non-con. I think you'd like to see her. If you're K-State, you want to get her going. Loves that mid-range game. She's got a great soft touch in the paint. Kind of just some foul trouble the last meeting with the Baylor Bears and never really was a factor. Well, Gustin and it, has four. Yeah, it's easy working for Gustin right now. Able to just post up on that block. She's got a smaller Gregory on her. Turning over that left shoulder. Jalen Glenn, who had the big block at the end of the Baylor game to clinch the win on the road for K-State. Gregory way off the mark. Sanchez, though, keeps it alive. Offensive rebound and a reset for K-State. Riley Glenn will try her hand at the three. That's no good. This Wildcat team comes in shooting just 31% behind the arc. That is not their strength. And an answer on the other end is Wolston, who can really shoot the lights out behind the arc, hammers her first three. Yes, the numbers that she's putting up from beyond the arc. She leads the league in three-point field goal percentage, second in makes, averages about three a game, three three-point field goals made a game. Three seconds of the lane on K-State and a turnover. Here comes Boppin in for Sanchez. Eliza Boppin, a tremendous game in Waco. And Taryn Sides will join her. So a couple of freshmen for K-State. That's an early lead for BYU. This Cougar team is one that has had some success in first half, but as games have worn on, attrition seems to catch up with them. Gustin unable to hit, gets her own rebound, can't hit the follow. That's a great read, slipped the screen, K-State hedged hard, wide right open lane to the basket. And you can see her activity, at two misses, but you see the activeness that she's got on the offensive glass as well. Here's Moppin, who hit a big three in the game against the Bears. Drive by. It's where Briley Glenn has been so good this year in getting to the lane, but not only that, just picking her spots and when to go. Great first step, gets Wilson on her hip, uses that left hand so well. Great finish. It's odd. Glenn is right handed, but. She kind loves to run left to hand. go that way. It's kind of one of those odd things as far as a scout. Whiting thought about a three. Both of these teams, while BYU is much better percentage wise, by Sanchez has returned. She'll play with Moppin in the post for K State. Sanchez, a three pointer. Wildcats got a de facto week off after playing on Monday, and Moppin knocks away another interior pass. Lightning fast arms of the 6 4 Moppin. It'll be interesting all day with Lee out. Who's matching up with Gustin? Physical force inside, no doubt. Moppin sees Sundell back cut, missed it, but a foul. So, this is where BYU has encountered issues. 
some of those frontline players get into foul trouble. And is shooting a scalding 57.6% from the field. That's third best to the Big 12. And you're talking about a lot of post players most of the time. Sundell losing her footing, able to get it to a teammate. It finds Jada Glenn. Ty Walker, an offensive rebound. Sanchez. No look pass. Dropped off the Moffitt. Banging around on the court. Comes away to, Bay or to BYU. Rose Pubacar. Let's ahead to Smiler. Get to shoot a shot in this game so far. BYU one of the last eight. K-State one of the last seven. Gustin's follow not there after the miss on the drive by Matabau. And K-State trying to turn the tempo up. Sundell will pull and pop. Well, you mentioned it, but back-to-back -back games, 15 and a half points. It's she's just. <laughs> It's a rebound watch to see what she's going to land with. He just this. Bubakar. Well, one more for Gustin. We give her 1,500 in her career. She is the all-time school record holder in rebounds at BYU. Sundell trying to hit Sanchez slotting to the block. Sanchez will work around, go up strong, and miss the shot. BYU then throws it away. Sundell easy lays it in for Sanchez. Okay, Sanchez was seven. Yeah, just pushing the tempo. Quick crossover draws the defense and a nice dish for Sundell. Six turnovers in the first quarter for BYU. The Wildcats trying to hold serve. BYU will have the ball first to begin the second quarter. So a chance to go two for one here for the Cougars. Five of the shot clock. Bubakar has it with less than three. She passes to Gustin. And I'm not sure Gustin got it on. They will look at it, but it is on the court ruled. She did not. We have great fans, and for them to show up and like to continue showing up after Kansas is awesome. Yeah. Are, are you ready to get back to it in a couple weeks? Yeah, I'm excited. It'll be good. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Ayoka Lee. Truly a gentle giant. And a giant in the game of women's basketball right now, anxious to get her back out on the floor on the Wildcats, no doubt. BYU could not score at the end of the first. They didn't look at that basket attempt by Gustin. It was ruled a no basket. Clogging the lane, making it difficult. Is BYU coming off the curl hard? A little zone look there by BYU. Gregory, who has struggled through a shoulder injury all season, misfires on a three. Wolfstone on the bench with two fouls. BYU having to go somewhere else for offense. Smiler to the basket and a left hand layup. Jalen Glenn sets her feet. Great little pick and pop there. Glenn's another one in Big 12 play. Pushing her average up to 10 points a game. She's been solid from beyond the arc. You like to see that. This State both will really get her going offensively. What a weapon she is defensively, but ride something on the offensive end. It would add to it. Hey, State defense. Again, we... We'll talk more about this coming up at halftime. They have been, that has been their calling card all year long. And BYU doing just enough right now here in the early going. Well, Wilson is just one of those kids that goes hard to the basket and such a threat to be able to drive and be able to get to the rim, but also then shoot the three as well as she does. Wilson playing with two fouls. So BYU running a little bit of a gamble here. No on Jalen Glenn. Sanchez got the board, may have rushed the shot. State just 36% shooting. BYU just 28% shooting. It's the nation's best defense. The point blank range has not been friendly for either team. Gusted. We have gotten away with a walk. Has posted up on that block. Gregory trying to get her on track. This is the three pointer. Gabby now 0 of 4, all four shots behind the arc. Well, that's one of those two. She's got, conversely, she's got Gustin on her defensively. Ought to be able to. 
take her time because Guskin's been slow. Let's look at Guskin and Gregory. Battle of the 12s going at it. Gregory had to play a lot of post last year for K-State with Lee out with a knee injury. Wild shot put up right lane line by Madaval and a rebound by Gustin. Step back by Calvert. Gustin again got the rebound and put it in. She just is so active from side to side and being aware of where that ball is going off. Already 11 rebounds for Gustin. 20th game this year in double figures and rebounds. And K-State offensively just cannot get things to fall. I can't make a layup. It's Calvert killing K-State inside of that lob, and Jeff Biddy wants a timeout. Well underway. Walker all the way to the basket, couldn't hit the runner. Another layup missed by Kansas State. K-State just 1 of 11 from the floor in the second quarter. Just 24% shooting on the day, and it's not as if they've had contested layups. It's, uh, it's one of the cases they just flat out miss shots. Walker will steal one. She'll go all the way to the other end and miss that layup. My goodness. Walker usually won too, so good at finishing around the rim. Gustin will miss a layup. The ball tapped out. BYU gets an offensive chance. Back in it goes to Gustin. Double teamed immediately. Whiting lets go a three pointer. That is good. Again, Gustin keeping that ball active, keeping that ball tipped, and good ball movement out. And you get, you get a couple to go, you get a little bit of momentum. Sundell driving hard, gets the foul. She'll get to the free throw line. Well, Sundell to the free throw line. One of two so far at the stripe. She'll hit the first. That ends the 11 0 run. No more for Serena. Shorted. That, that has kept, right? It continues, it disrupts the other team and doesn't allow them to pull away. Seen that a little bit. KC averages 75 points on the season and in Big 12 play is right around 67, but the scoring margin is still consistent and that's defense. Defense are staying with it. Jalen Glenn left. <laughs> another three. Much needed for the Wildcats. Their first field goal. As you said, in five and a half minutes, and K-State suddenly within a point. Glenn, again, this season, I think, more so than any other, has just, she's hit a couple of threes that just have been timely in terms of either serving the, up the dagger or getting momentum built back up. Go back to hand in a moment. Amari Whiting, some <laughs> quick hands out there on the floor. She has snuck away the ball a few times from K-State's guards. Well, if she gets about two steals a game, and that's, that comes from a defensive-minded head coach as well. Loves the kids that want to be gritty and work. Sundell and Glenn get bailed out with a foul on Whiting. The shot clock winding down. That was a, a big break. K-State now could hold it for the final shot. Sundell has 10 seconds to work with. Here's Jalen Glenn. Steps to her left. Let's go to three. Gustin gets the board. And the half will close. What a performance by BYU on the road. They lead it at the break. They're only down three, which is the good news. You got you to gotta think there was some passionate discussions happening in the locker room. You would think. Bobcats unbeaten all time against BYU, 3-0. Sundell will just drive all the way to the basket to score. Six for Sundell. Boy, K-State went five out that possession. Hard hedge on Smiler. Whiting and Wolston start the second half, each playing with two fouls, and good ball movement finds Calvert. Uh, Calvert, 6-4. Tough matchup for Sanchez. Sanchez, strong take to the lane. Gets the shot, the ball, and one. Good strong drive. Right in the middle of the lane. Got good touch in the lane. High advantage over Smiler who tried to step in. I think Coach Monty's argument here is that this should not have been a shot. The foul was on the drive through before the act of shooting, but not so says. Good. 
get it to Custon. And State lurking. Whiting at the shot clock buzzer. Just such a quick crossover and first step. Got her by the defense and a tough finish with the floater. And highly touted player. Gregory. She wanted it, and she gets it. Well, she's had space. She's had space. She's had room all day. And again, just getting her mind ready. Able to knock it down. Big bucket. Gregory forced the foul. Gustin, that's actually not a bad play. Gustin's really struggling from the free throw line this year. And she'll miss the first for Gustin of the season. So clearly a bit of a mental part. Roll in the second. With the lateral movement, and she gets it low on the crossover, gets her hand in there. Idaho Player of the Year. Drive. Her first appearance in the second half, replacing Sanchez and Sundell to the line. You see her numbers in the early part of the third. To make her return, that'd be the minimum time, around four weeks. Sundell can't hit the second. Moffin tried to back tap, and a foul on Bubakar. This is not going to please BYU, who was claiming that Moppin was over the back. K-State will shoot free throws on any whistle. Gregory for two in a row. That's just a big, big turn of events, big momentum shift there with a foul on Bubakar underneath and then being able to get another foul drawn. And a big three again from, from Gregory. All of a sudden, momentum has changed quickly. It finds Wolston and a three, or Smiler and a three. They're out here for Sundell. Pops not to take it to the basket. Ball whipped in and a foul from behind on Mataval. That will put Gregory to the free throw line. Gregory is shooting for him all season long. She's trying to play through it. Anybody that's had... You know, bad shoulder, wrist, it just affects everything. You try and overcompensate in one area and it doesn't work, but Gregory has shown since early in the second quarter. Smiler through the lane. Wraparound pass to Gustin. Asher draws the second defender. Riley Glenn unable to hit the runner. Tied at 36. Without their point guard, here come the Cougars. Whiting on the bench with three fouls. Gustin able to beat Moffin. Gregory for a third. In and out. Couldn't get it. Gustin again. This time over. And the ball movement again for BYU side to side. She stays active, Gustin does, in the paint and able to get the defender behind her. Gregory gets inside of Bubakar. Nine points for Gregory, all in this quarter. And the senior trying to will her team back into this thing. Wolston pulls up for a three. No, mopping the rebound. King State might have flipped to a zone there. Well, and a little bit of a switch, too, as Gregory... Riley She's trying to finish off a three-point play, looking for eight points. Won't get it. Gustin up. Ryan Smother, Kristen Waller. Hannah, what's doing all with you here from Bramlett's Coliseum? As BYU looks to pull off the upset. And a travel, yeah, a double dribble in the lane. There's Moppin. Trying to get Gregory posted up. Viewpoint. As you've seen Moffin's minutes and numbers go up, that's one of the things Jeff Mitty talks about is she's starting, it's starting to come a little bit more naturally in terms of where the cuts are supposed to happen and the timing. And again, just the athleticism to get herself a good high percentage shot. Smiler gets inside a Moppin and an easy left. Uh, K-State's vaunted defense struggling today. Seven for ten are the Cougars in this third quarter. Now up to 46% shooting for the game. Against the K-State defense that allows teams to shoot 
close to 37 percent and a foul in the lane away from the ball. They're sticking to their preparation and good things will happen. Right way back to the free throw line. We'll make the first team All Big 12 a year ago. Unanimous first team preseason All Big 12. She'll make one of two. BYU has countered by hitting six of seven. The last few trips down the floor against this K-State defense and another turnover. And again, a couple extra steps. Whiting has returned with her three fouls. Sundell working against her. Jalen Glenn on the screen is open. Not much success inside the arc for the Wildcats. They've hit seven threes from the perimeter. Wolston shoves away Sundell. Won't get the shot. Who else but Gustin with an offensive rebound? Whiting an open three. Got it! The second opportunities off the Gustin board have been huge today for BYU. Final few seconds of the third quarter. Walker, baseline, hanging jumper. Her first points, and is that the spark that K-State needed? She hit one of those at the end of the quarter against Texas. It's, it's difficult sometimes. The lines get blurred. You know, you're trying, especially when it's your star point guard. Wadi, one of the top players in the class of 2023. It was headed to Oregon before an injury, and then she opted to go fall the mom at BYU. Gustin able to get inside and lays it up. Gregory able to, yeah, Gregory able to get around front. Good post side, but K-State's help side not there that time. So the look again from BYU. Walker left wide open. Bitch points. That's where Walker has been. She's got the ability to stretch the defense and hit the three. Gustin turning over that left shoulder. 19 points, especially in the second half. Sanchez right around Calvert. Reverse slam up and in. Timeout BYU is K State senses. Calvert comes all the way back to pick it up to help. BYU get it across. They do just in time to Gustin, who tritely traveled with the ball, but no call as she lays it in. 21 points for Gustin. Sanchez with the lead down to two. A no look pass to Sundell. Sanchez known for those no look passes. Now she gets the steal out high working with Sundell. Another one dropped off for Serena and a foul call. Sundell makes the first of two free throws, and now she's in double figures for the seventh straight game. Missed the second, but she'll get her own rebound. Sundell pinned down low. Out high to Gregory, and the ball taken away by Smiler. BYU running with Wolston. And Wolston will double clutch it in. Three-point lead for the Wildcats. Trying to survive here at home against BYU. Sanchez. Brings with a three. 15 for Sanchez. High arcing three. And that all net. Came in just five of 31 from behind the arc. That's 16%. The answer Ooh. from Wolston. <laughs> Story on the other side, Gustin, one rebound away from her second 2020 game of the season. Sundell denied on a baseline drive. It finds Sanchez. A new career high! The Spaniard with the third three of the game. The 16% coming in, and it's you can tell she's getting a feel now also of just Confidently going up with the shot. Gustin working hard underneath. Back. 23 points under Jeff Biddy when making nine threes. Now Sanchez stripped to the ball. Picked up by BYU. Uh, and that's where you got Amari Whiting on the help side there. Get too deep into traffic. Whiting with the quick hands able to knock it loose. Lob going for Gustin. She got inside again. 25 a season high for Lauren Gustin. Gregory, a strong take, trying to get a foul on Gustin. Didn't get the whistle. 
And the Cougars hold serve, a chance to tie the game or take the lead on the road at number four, K-State. Looking for Calvert. Foul! And Emma Calvert to the free throw line, a 64% free throw shooter. This team struggles from the free throw line to 63%. Did not make either. And then Sanchez saves it in, going out of bounds right to Wolston, who ties the game. A 6 0 run here by the Cougars. Sundell trying to shed Whiting. Gregory working her way inside. Gets it back on a repost. Trying to shovel it off to Sanchez. To the ground. Ball still loose. K-State picks it up. Shot clock under two. Glendis fires it up and it'll miss. Shot clock violation. BYU to get the ball. Maybe kind of caused the, not the turnover, but the scrum over there. Ball got loose. Yep, looks like some blood on the hand. She'll, she'll get tended to. They haven't led since the 333 mark of the third quarter. Wolston in a scrum and a tie up the arrow to K State. No Gregory on the court because of that cut. So the Wildcats operating without one of their key weapons. Shot clock at 10. Sundell tries to navigate. Outlet pass falls to Briley Glenn. Quick runner, no. Rebound, Gustin, who gets that 20-20 game and then draws the foul. Or no, I'm sorry. BYU gets the ball with a chance to take the lead on the other end. In front of a packed Bramlett's Coliseum against the Big 12 leader. in. Foul from the top side from Jalen Glenn. 15 of the shot clock for the Cougars. Calvert just throwing mopping away. Calvert off the glass. No. The rebound Sundell. Can't stay back the other way. Jalen Glenn top of the circle and a timeout by Jeff Biddy. Inbound play will find Sundell. She'll go underneath, reverse layup, not there. Rebound, Briley Glenn, and a foul by BYU will send Glenn to the free throw line. Tracking the basketball. Now you got to knock down some free throws. That is not, KC just 5 of 10 on the afternoon from the foul line. And Glenn misses the first. This has been an issue for K-State this year. 71% at the line. That's 11th out of 14 teams in the Big 12. Glenn hits the second. She has eight points. A one-point lead for the Cavs, and the crowd comes to life as K-State relies on that vaunted defense. BYU just the third team this season to get over 60 points. Whiting throws up a crazy shot, but draws the foul. Trying to go early. Had a couple of misses early on in the game. 65% free throw shooter is Whiting. Just coaches it in. And now the Wildcats will go down and try and take the lead. No field goals for K-State. The last 350. Sundell, another reverse layup coming and another foul on BYU. Dustin's fourth foul. Sundell to the stripe. Serena is four of eight at the free throw line. points for Sundell, who has eight assists and six boards. One more for the junior point guard. Rend it in. Gustin, the handoff 
to Wolston. Wolston full head of steam. Throws it off. Couldn't get it. Rebound Sunday. Comes out of there with it. Walker across midcourt is fouled from behind by Wolston. But got her going to the left. That's a tough shot to make. And Sundell, you said it. Big board, big free throw by Walker. BYU has one more timeout. Sounds like they're going to use it after this shot. By Walker trying to go up three. Could not get it. And a rebound foul on Moppet over the back. We'll go to the other end and shoot free throws. As loud as it's been. And Calvert missed the first. Former Utah Player of the Year, Calvert. A starter a year ago. Trying to pull BYU within one. Inbound the basketball, secure the basketball, and you got to knock down the free throws. 12 of 21, K-State is on the afternoon from the free throw line. Hit some free throws here down the stretch. Jalen Glenn able to escape Wolston. And then it lands with Sundell. Fourth foul on Wolston, so now Whiting, Wolston, Gustin all with four. Sundell with the free throw line. She just hit two. And she is able to get the first one to call in. 14 points for Serena Sundell. 7 of 11 at the free throw line. 37 minutes for Sundell tonight. Short of the second. And BYU will use their final, or one of their final timeouts. The guard in me is, wouldn't be surprised if they go for it and go, and go for the win, to go for the three. Certainly would understand it if that is indeed the case. Calvert will be unguarded to throw it in. Looking for Wolston. It goes to Gustin. Now to Whiting, 15 seconds to play. Whiting trying to look for an opening. Lay run a slip to counter. She gets blocked by Walker. 8.2 left, and it's out of bounds. So BYU will play it in, needing a two to tie, a three to upset number four. Wolston. Double team, forces it up, couldn't get it. It stays with BYU again, tapped out by K-State. BYU got a chance to draw up a play here during that timeout. They'll set the time back to four seconds. What do they do? Again, a two to tie, a three to win. Boy, for BYU, you couldn't ask for a better look. K-State will inbound the ball and survive.